Hi everyone, welcome back to .md. My name is Michael and I'm an incoming MD-PhD student at the University of Pennsylvania. Today we're going to be talking about MD-PhD interviews and how they differ from your traditional MD interviews. And my goal for this video is to describe some of the differences between the MD-PhD and MD interview processes and also what you can typically expect from a traditional MD-PhD interview. So your first question might be like, okay, who is this guy? Like, why can he say anything about the MD-PhD interview process? I'll include somewhere in this video, um, basically all of the places that I was invited to interview at, and also all of the places that I actually interviewed at and I accepted those interview invitations. Hopefully this gives you a, a little sense of like basically where I'm coming from and my own personal interview experiences. Before we get started, I also wanna give you a, a brief sense on where the interview process fits into the rest of the application season. So basically after you start submitting your secondaries, hopefully in the middle of July, like during that time frame, um, you'll start hearing back from programs uh, near the start of the fall season. So for example, I got my first interview invitation, I think at the beginning of August and my actual first interview um, occurred in the third week of September. After that, interviews continue until basically January or February. Some programs even go until March, or, although I think that's pretty rare. You'll get interviews at you know varying time points throughout that entire process. So for example, I think I front loaded a lot of my interviews. So um, I was actually done with all of my interviews that I actually attended around the middle of December. So the next thing that we're gonna talk about is basically what is the structure of an MD-PhD interview look like? In general, when you're interviewing with a particular program, you'll be there for usually around two to three days. Some interviews uh, with certain MD-PhD programs might be only a day long, but that I felt like that was pretty rare. And so usually how that will look like is that you might interview with like the MD program on say like a Thursday, and then the PhD pro part of the program on a Friday. Sometimes you might have like the dual degree specific type of interviews like scheduled somewhere in the middle there, but that was like a stereotypical schedule that I might receive. During the actual interview date, you should also expect the entire process to take the entirety of those two days. Meaning that if you, you know, are working a part-time job or you're still doing research or you are still doing classes, you basically have to treat those two days as if you can't do any amount of work whatsoever. It's a very long process, takes multiple days, and it's very, very intensive. And so you really want to make sure that you appropriately schedule your fall time frame during the interview season to make sure that you're not taking any ridiculously hard classes, you're not working with a PI that doesn't give you any kind of like uh, vacation days, I guess, for your interview. In general, I would also recommend recommend like don't try and study abroad like during the interview process stuff like that just as a side note so I did interview during the COVID-19 pandemic and so what that meant was that all of my interviews went through zoom and were completely virtual that saved me like a lot of money a lot of flight costs and I didn't have to fly to each institution um, and while there were certainly some drawbacks to this I felt like that you know it was a pretty big pro for me to be able to do the interview in the comfort of my own home I'm not sure how that process will change moving forward once like things start opening up, but that's something de definitely to be cognizant about. Now that we've talked a little bit about the structure of a typical MD PhD interview, what are some of the common questions that you might expect on the interview day? In general, I think the MD PhD interviews across many different schools are pretty standardized, meaning that you'll receive many of the same questions across different schools. So for example, some of these questions might include, tell me about your research. Why do you want to do MD PhD specifically? If you could choose between MD and PhD, which one would you choose if you were forced to make that decision? I think a lot of people believe implicitly that if you're going into an MD PhD program, you're forced to do kind of like academic medicine after graduation and you have to run a research lab. In general, that's not the case. And I think that most programs, they actually don't expect people to have to choose that. Um, you know, you could, you might want to do, you know, government work. You might want to do, uh, you know, uh, public policy or some social work, or you might even want to go into consulting and start your own tech startup or something like that. So don't feel obligated to give like a answer that doesn't really speak to your application and just say that you're going to do academic medicine when you don't actually really want to do that. Other questions that you might expect are tell me about yourself. So basically like a quick elevator pitch and also just be familiar with your application, including all of your activities and your personal statement, stuff like that. Sometimes I had interviewers ask me like really specific questions about activities that 
were even that related to medicine and weren't my most meaningful activities. So bottom line is just make sure to review your application a couple of times before going into the interview. Another really big thing that I want to point out is that the MD PhD interview process is basically like nothing like the MD interview process. A lot of like the resources that you'll find online for MD interviews, like MMIs, like those things don't exist for MD PhD applicants. It's really traditional. It's just a one-on-one -on -one interview. I think the only, the only school that I had the offer of interviewing at um, that did MMIs was Duke. Everything else was just your stereotypical traditional interview format. And so I would be cautious in using MD specific interview materials that you might find on Reddit or elsewhere online in preparing for your MD PhD interviews. It's really nothing alike. And finally, the last thing I want to talk about for this part of the video is Vita. I don't actually remember what it stands for, but basically it was like this virtual interview component that you had to complete. Um, and some of the schools accepted them, some of them didn't. The goal for this tool was basically to allow um, schools to better get to know like their applicants because of like the whole virtual interview process that everyone was going through. In general, I hated it. I don't think I did not know anyone that actually liked it. And so hopefully they don't make you guys use that tool in future application cycles because it's just so weird talking to just a camera with no one behind it and trying to like think of interview responses on the on the top of your head. So the good news is like, although I did really badly on it, I don't think schools valued it very highly because if they did, I don't think I would have gotten accepted to as many places as I did. And another component is that even though, you know, for example, I, I mentioned like Thursdays might be like the MD part of your interview process, typically, you know, your MD interviewers do know that you're applying for MD PhD. And so they do adjust the questions that they'll be asking you. Again, it's not your traditional MD interview format. Now it's time for some general interview tips that I wish I had known going into the interview cycle. So this goes for, I guess, both MD PhD and MD interview processes. Be confident, be concise, be engaging, and most importantly for MD PhD interviewees, know your research. Especially since a lot of us have taken kind of like Zoom online classes during the COVID-19 pandemic, we must be familiar with like Zoom fatigue and really losing focus with whatever the instructor is talking about during online lectures, for instance. And the same thing goes for your interviewers as well. You do not want to be sort of like lecturing them about your application during the interview. So for example, I really tried to keep my answers as brief and concise as possible. And my goal was that because I was keeping my answers short, it would invite them to ask more questions and actually get to know me more. And basically it would create a two-way discussion as opposed to me just answering the questions and moving on to the next prompt. And while I did say that's really important to know your research beforehand inside and out, there will be times when you don't know how to answer like a reviewer's comment that your interviewer makes. This is completely okay. And make sure you don't panic during this process and don't try and just say something that's not true. My impression was that they really valued honesty. And so if you just literally tell them, hey, I, I don't know the answer to that question. I've never actually thought about that too much. Let me get back to you on that. And after the interview, like actually try and figure out the answer and you can actually send them an email about it. And so I remember doing that, I think like two or three times during the entire interview process. So it's not a bad thing, know your limits and just be honest and frank about it. And they'll really appreciate that. Another challenge I remember facing was basically, so it's, it's important to kind of prepare for your interviews, but don't try and over prepare as well and, and basically sound like a robot. You wanna keep things casual and you know try and wing some parts of the conversation. Instead of like trying to write a script for like potential interview questions that might come up, really try to know your application inside and out and be able to summarize who you are as a person and why you wanna do the things that you wanna do. If you know that, honestly, you'll be able to tackle any interview question that they throw at you. A lot of people also have questions about like thank you letters and thank you emails that you might wanna send after the interview process. Um, frankly, I'm not really sure how helpful they were. I still sent out a lot of them like for my earlier interviews, but I got lazier and lazier as the interviews went on and basically I stopped sending them at some point. So I'm not really sure how helpful it is, but it does leave a good impression. And I sometimes got some really nice responses from the professors and PIs after the interviews. And so I think it's just good common courtesy. If you have the energy and you're able to do it, I would recommend sending them. Also, especially for the PhD interviews, I think a lot of people suggest reading um, maybe some recent publications from your interviewer beforehand. I, I personally don't think that's like super helpful and even that feasible because oftentimes I would receive my interview schedule like literally the night before the interview and you don't really have the time to be able to like actually go through all five of like your PhD interviewers like in depth before your actual interview. In general, it was just such low yield and they never actually came up in 
any like conversation or anything. So I don't really recommend reading your interviewer's papers or anything like that. As another side note, I remember being super, super scared before my first interview. And I think anyone going through this process is gonna feel similar feelings. For that reason, if it's possible to schedule like your, like maybe like not as important interviews first, I would definitely recommend doing that. But regardless, you're always gonna feel some like tension and anxiety before your first interview. That gradually goes away and actually goes away pretty quickly as you continue to do more interviews throughout the cycle. So I remember towards like the end of the interview process, I would literally like get up like 20 minutes beforehand before like the start of the interview day, throw on a suit, you know, brush my teeth, wash my face, and I'm ready in front of my desk for like the virtual interviews, like in 20 minutes. And I basically, that's all of my preparation. So um, you'll get really comfortable with it and it won't be as difficult as you go through the process. And finally, last but not least, there will be a lot of opportunities for you to meet some of the, like the other applicants um, throughout the application cycle. So at many schools, they have like these like applicant hangout sessions towards the end of like the interview days on Thursdays and Fridays. I would really try and take advantage of those if you can. You know, it's a really great opportunity for you to meet a lot of the people that you'll be interviewing alongside with, many of which will be your future classmates. And if not, they'll also be your future colleagues. And so establishing these connections really early on, I thought was a really cool part of like the interview process and something that personally I wish I had taken more advantage of. Okay, so those were basically all of the comments I had on the MD PhD interview process. I hope this gives you some sort of insight into what the MD PhD interview process looks like and what you can expect on interview day. If you still have a lingering question or if there's something that um, you want more clarification on, feel free to leave a comment down below. Please also make sure to like and subscribe the video if you enjoyed the content and I'll see you in the next video.